Hmm. Oh, it looks like a bit. Oh, okay. I got it. All right. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our Tiger Talk. Um, my name is Lindsay Bray and I'm the Senior Coordinator of Parent and Family Services here at the University of Memphis. Uh, today we have Linda Hall, our Associate Director of Multicultural Affairs, um, and a current student, Kennedy Willis, here to talk with you all about our Multicultural Affairs Office, um, how the University of Memphis is celebrating Black History Month this year, and the events that are happening, and how your student can in get involved this month, and, and really year-round um, in all of the efforts that, that our, this Multicultural Affairs Office puts on for our students. So Dean Hall and Kennedy, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, to get us started, uh, Linda, would you like to tell us kind of a little bit about um, your office and a little bit about Black History Month this year? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Lindsay, for having me and welcome parents. Um, <clears throat> the 2021 uh, Black History Month theme is the Black family, representation, uh, uh, inclusion, those kinds of things, uh, identity. And we are all, the way we looked at the theme this year is that we all tigers, no matter what our family makeup is. And we want people to all feel included, uh, to be a part of it. Uh, our roots start in our family. No matter what that family makeup is, that is where we start. So we hope background behind me is, the, um, is our marketing uh, uh, poster for the month. And feel free to go on our marketing website to uh, take it off. Um, we have, uh, what we do is we engage faculty, staff, and students in planning the month. And so we've come up with quite a few things. We, uh, only one thing uh, that we do annually, we did not have. We did not have a Lifetime Achievement Award uh, ceremony to, this year due to the age of normally the recipients. And we felt like it would be a little bit difficult for them and their families to get on Zoom and do the things we needed them to do. And they may need to hear the like, applause for it. So, but the other things that we have, the month is uh, filled with student activity. So I'm glad we're having this discussion because it's a great way for students that don't feel comfortable coming to some of our evening programs. They can stay right at home and Zoom in. And the students uh, have planned so many activities that everybody can feel a part of. Uh, even staying at home, being a part, and Kennedy will tell you a little bit about that. Uh, the Mahogany Ball will go ahead. We will not do the Freedom Awards part of it. We will have a Mahogany Ball where the students can stay at home and have a great time dressing up and looking good for the camera. Um, we will have different speakers. We've always already had a great event. We had a cooking show on Thursday featuring one of our alums, uh, Chef B. Arthur, who is Desmond Robinson, who was a former student, former Black Student Association president, former member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, those kinds of things. He was truly a student leader and it was great having him back on campus. And that is our plan always during Black History Month, at least to spotlight one of our alums. So I'm hoping that one of your students will be on the big screen one day uh, so that we, we wanna make sure that we keep up with them so that we can always invite them back. That's great. Kennedy, can you tell us a little bit about some of your um, your favorite events? And um, are you on the planning committee as well? So I have been planning um, a little bit through Black History Month during the break. It's probably one of the biggest highlights of my year, and especially during the academic school year for me. Uh, right now, we're planning mahogany in terms of NAACP. We're making sure that people still feel validated in the virtual experience. And so that's really been the biggest thing so far is making sure when we plan these things out, whether we're just helping out, not necessarily in my organization, but in different organizations as well, always be a helping hand because we wanna make sure that everyone in every organization, especially multicultural affairs has a Zoom presence as we should say. That's really fabulous that, that you're really also trying to help facilitate other organizations as well and, and get everyone involved as part of that. Um, do you have, so you said the mahogany ball is gonna, is your favorite one coming up? Yeah, that you're, that's, my, wow. that's literally my favorite one coming up only because it takes so long to plan. So it takes, you have to really start on it in fall semester and you have to be on it until the day comes literally. So it's literally what you put into it what you put in, what you put out, 
And we always want to make sure we provide greatness and strive for that every day. And when will that be this year? It will be February 19th at Ooh, coming up fast. Yes, That's awesome. it's so exciting. Um, well, Linda, I know as part of um, your office and just in general at the University of Memphis, we, we always like celebrating the diversity that we have here at the university, but also our alums. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, the Memphis State 8 and, and their impact here at the, at the University of Memphis and how we've celebrated them? Okay, glad to do that. Um, <clears throat> the Memphis State 8, uh, just from a historical perspective, were eight students from uh, being a legacy Memphis City Schools that they were all top students uh, in their schools. They were either valedictorians or salutatorians of their classes. And the NAACP recruited them through their families to try to integrate uh, the University of Memphis in 1959. Uh, those students, so those eight students were selected from various schools, Manassas, Hamilton, Booker T. Washington, those schools which were the premier uh, schools at that time in Memphis uh, with a great uh, black presence. However, they, of course, they were met with resistance and of course, no one wanted to integrate uh, the university at that time. Even the president uh, of the university at that time stated that if they did it, then he would no longer serve as president. Uh, so they did not allow the students to come to class on the first day of class. They would not do it. So they were delayed until September the 19th, 1959, to actually come on campus. Heavily guarded. Uh, what I do like now talking to those uh, living members of that group is they were never allowed to come to the university center. So you can see how humble they are anytime they enter that building because when they were students, they were not allowed to do that. Their uh, physical education requirements were waived, uh, all of those things, so they couldn't do it. Uh, they had to come to school approximately at the same time. They would meet on the other side of the railroad track and walk across uh, together for safety reasons. Uh, they would have to uh, be escorted to class. Um, they would have to meet again. They had, had to be off campus by noon. Uh, all of those things happened, but they persevered. They were persistent. And so I stand on their shoulders um, uh, to be able to do what I do. They are amazed that I'm able to do what I do because they could not have imagined that when they were students. Uh, and uh, now there is a historical marker uh, honoring them outside of the very administration building that did not even want them to attend. So that there's a historical marker that will be there long after they leave this earth as well as myself. Uh, uh, they will do that. We've had several honors in, on their behalf. Uh, last year, we celebrated 60 years since they uh, actually came to the university. It was a great, great honor. Unfortunately, four of them are deceased now. Uh, a year, uh, about two years ago, uh, two of them died in the same month in February during Black History Month. And um, then last year, uh, the other one died during Black History Month. Mrs. Simpson died during Black History Month. So it's really significant that we always, always honor them. And so since it's been announced by the, uh, by the president, there will be an additional honor to Luther McClellan, who was the first graduate of that group. Uh, the uh, alumni plaza will be, uh, alumni mall will be named in his honor because it's cold outside, we did not, we decided not to do it because they are all 80 or close to it, uh, to try to figure out whether it be 20 degrees outside uh, for that honor. But we look forward to it. We'll be having it this spring uh, at some point uh, to name that mall after them. And we always remember that was just not an area that they ever had the privilege of, of being in where our students freely now congregate often <laughs> and I think it has, it's, it's, it's a special thing because now our Greek letter organizations all have plots in that general area so I think it's a it's a great thing so we have four living um members of that group still with us today well that's wonderful that we we celebrate them in that way and that we are going to get to continue to honor honor them 
um, and our first graduate as well. And hopefully we get to do that when the when the weather gets a little colder and we can all come together again a little bit more too um, in, a, in a safe way as well. Well, that's wonderful. Um, so, it, so from your office too, um, I know multicultural affairs um, is a big umbrella uh, for our institution. Can you talk a little bit about what all kind of falls under under your office and and what you kind of offer our students under that? What we strive to do, of course, is to um, continue. Uh, the our goal is to. Uh, make sure that we want all of our students to understand that they, we, we embrace diversity on our campus and we are about inclusion. Diversity, people think they know what that means, uh, but inclusion is just as important. Maybe we should say inclusion and diversity instead of the other way around, because we want all of our students to feel included no matter where they come from or who they are. We want to embrace it. So, uh, given the history that uh, we just talked about, you know, my, this office was created uh, in the early 1970s as a place of advocacy uh, for then African-American students. But since that time, just as the university has become diverse, so has our office. So therefore, we, we, we advocate for students of, that are underrepresented. And when I say underrepresented, we only mean that in numbers in numbers uh, of the underrepresented groups that's on campus. And that includes our Asian students, our Muslim students, our Hispanic students, our LGBTQ students, our, our um, Asian, we have them split in uh, Asian and Vietnamese. We have uh, African, we have African Student Association. We have all of those things. Of course, we have uh, about five or six uh, groups that uh, primarily deal with the African-American population, but not limited to. Uh, we have the Black Student Association. We have a collegiate chapter of the NAACP. We have PAWS, which is not race-based. Uh, it's Professional Assertive United Systems of Excellence. We have empowered men of color because there is a retention and graduation rate that is real with our underrepresented groups. Um, we, have, we, have, we have organizations and programs and the difference between our RSOs that report directly to our office and other RSOs is that they have our full-time attention. We're just not paper signers. We attend all their, their uh, programs, help them plan it. We teach them leadership skills. Uh, Kennedy can attest to that. So when you're not doing it right and you're not going by policy, we will teach you mm -hmm. how to do that, how to be strong leaders, because sometimes it's hard because we want all of our students maybe to go out and be supervisors we want them to know how to manage people, how, how to manage, how to be empathetic toward them. We want them to lead. So we do a lot of leadership uh, uh, programs. We try to take our students on conferences. We tell them about job opportunities, especially so a lot of our Fortune 500 companies come to our office because they're looking to uh, diversify their work uh, environment. And so they come to us because we know that the University of Memphis has top talent. We got tiger talent here. And so they look for us as a premier university in Memphis and in the state. And so they come to us looking for that talent. So they look for our office. They come to us, even though we have a fantastic career services office, but they come to our office saying, what can you do to help us find this talent? And so when students are connected to our office, we can better connect them to these opportunities, whether there's internships in Washington, D.C. or Nashville or anywhere in the United States, we go out and try to find resources for them. We do leadership retreats. We do, again, we do, I would say 90% of cultural programming at the university and all of it is student-led. So if you come to a program on our campus, you'll never see me on stage. You will see me in the back. I'm a good coach. And I'm not in the back, don't do that, do this, whatever. I, I, I'm that person because I want students to feel comfortable uh, in their leadership roles. We want people, even those students that are not leaders, we want them to learn organization skills. We need that because this is the things that they will not get in the academic classroom. And this is what we do at the same time promoting 
one of the goals of the university, one of our set values is, is diversity and inclusion. And that's what we are about on a daily basis. Yeah, y'all do some amazing work, Linda, in your office you. and always appreciate the wonderful students that come out of there. Kennedy, do you wanna talk a little bit about how you've been involved and in, in some of the skills and, and things you've learned in being involved um, with those organizations under multicultural affairs? Oh my goodness. So multicultural affairs is literally my home away from home. Um, I don't know where I would be without it. It has really shaped me into a well-rounded and universal individual. So I am the, currently the president of the University of Memphis chapter of NAACP. I am also a member of PAWS. And I also support BSA and Black Scholars and even EMOC when I can. <laughs> it's just all about showing that love and support and being under Ms. Hall and helping her plan events, seeing her be a coach and provide mentorship. She's believed in me in so many ways that I didn't even think I can handle. I didn't even think I was capable of being or doing anything in multicultural affairs. So she has shaped me into an individual that can climb even mountains. There's like I climb the mountains, I can conquer them as well. Well, that's fantastic. You, you've definitely learned a lot of great skills out of that office. Um, do, would you agree with Ms. Hall that, um, that a lot of those are, are kind of those outside the classroom, hands-on experiences that you've gotten? Yes. So you need to build that community, even if it's outside the classroom. You need to have a safe space. And Multicultural Affairs has been my safe space. That's how I've got to know different people. I learned more about different things that I've it actually gave me more insight about being more inclusive. Like Ms. Hall said, diversity is just being in that space. Inclusivity is respecting someone, hearing someone, making sure they feel welcome and providing in insight on different things and building that cultural competency. So I can really say that I've developed because of that office and without it, I probably wouldn't feel so confident in conquering anything, whether it's academically, professionally, socially, that it just impacted me to the point where I know I can do anything because I know what built me for that moment. Do you have any recommendations for how students can, can get involved um, with some of those many organizations that you mentioned that you're, you're involved with or others that are, that are out there under, under multicultural affairs? So, like I said, you just have to contact people. Just don't think, don't come into it in an open mind. Come into it with an open mind, but don't think that just because we're student leaders that we think we're better than you, that we're holier than thou. We want you to get connected. And if we cannot connect you to our organization, we definitely have the connections to connect you to where you want to be. Um, just be open-minded, learn new things, go on Tiger Zone. Um, if you have social media, follow different organizations on social media, go to a meeting or two, or just ask around. We will be happy to connect you. Just contact us or contact our organization. I love that. We, we always encourage our, our parents to encourage their students to just reach out and create those networks. So that's great that you're reinforcing that and that, that's how you got to do it too. Um, Linda, do, do you have any other suggestions for ways that students can get, can get involved with, with your office? Yeah, I definitely visit our website. Then therefore you can see what organizations we are primarily responsible for. Mm -hmm. As Kennedy say, said, we're not just working with those organizations. I work uh, closely with the National Panhellenic Organization. Uh, I support uh, most of their activities. Uh, I work closely with the Student Government Association as well as SAC, Student Activities Council. And Type Zone is your guide. Please tell your students to check activities, events on Tiger Zone. Uh, I call it in the virtual world, you can just lurk around. <laughs> you can just lurk around. You can just attend an event without actually joining an organization. And so you can kind of feel. Uh, if this is where you belong. So you go to those events, just shop around, you know, act like you're at a buffet, you know, <laughs> just, just go to some of those events and say, hey, I kind of like that. You know, maybe this is where I fit. But the other part to it is that what I do like about a lot of our cultural organizations, they are not made up of the people 
that the name implies that belong to our Hispanic Student Association is probably our most diverse organization there is. There are people from all walks of life in, in HSA. Sometimes you just need to learn. I know that we all have our thoughts and perceptions about certain groups of people. We should try to get rid of those as early as possible. So one of those things is getting to know somebody that's not like you, do not come from a background like you, may not be of the same race or ethnic background from you. Uh, they may have a different sexual identity than you. One of our greatest, I would say, additions to our office is to serve Stonewall Tiger. And that is our LGBTQ group. I realize we're in the Bible Belt of the, of the United States, but these are students. They are tigers. We embrace them. This is a safe place. I don't know I, if, if uh, Lindsay will get to this question, but I'll just answer it <laughs> beforehand. We have, we have safe zone training. Safe zone training we do in collaboration with the counseling center. They do part one, we do part two, so that you can come and learn how to engage better, to debunk some of the myths that we have, to have actual, actual information and to understand that we all are tigers. We just all got different stripes. And so we want to make sure that everybody feels included. So we, in, in our office as well, we have a uh, inclusion uh, manager in our office, uh, Chelsea Liddell, and she is an expert in LGBTQ issues and resources. Uh, we have made some incredible, incredible uh, uh, gains at the university just simply because we didn't know that we need to do that. Where is a safe place? Where can I use the bathroom? How do, how do I get my, my, my instructor to call me by my preferred name? Uh, how, how, how is it all right for me in my signature line to put my pronouns so that you'll know how to best uh, do that? If we have students that are transgendered, how do we support them? How do we support students that would like to uh, tran tr you know, trans you know, the, from one to the other? How do we do that? How do we guide them to chancery court to get some documents changed? We are a resource, a safe resource, force coaching. All of those things we can help your students with. There is nothing that we cannot help them with and we'll walk with them through any processes that they have, any concerns that they have in their classrooms with their peers, we will walk with them through resolving any issues that they may have. And that's wonderful that you all provide that for our students and that help throughout that. So you mentioned pronouns a little. Um, can you speak a little bit about, about that and maybe the best practice that you suggest for students um, all of our students, if they choose to um, to let other people know about those, how, what your best practices are on that. Okay, um, one of the things that students or faculty, staff, everybody has started to do is adding your pronouns to your signature. You have no idea when a student that belongs to the LGBTQIA community uh, sends you an email and they see that you have put your pronouns out there. They feel like you're an ally that you are a safe place, a safe person that they can identify with. And if you see some pronouns that you may not be familiar with, always create space to ask, okay, I'm not familiar with that pronoun. What does that actually mean? Especially if you see a pronoun like they, them, what, 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 does, what does that mean? That is so that you can be respectful. I don't like the word tolerate respectful in addressing a person the way that they want to be addressed. We work in a place of higher education and those, those faculty members that have labored to get their uh, PhDs and EDDs, they wanna be called doctor, I promise you they do, or professor. And so just like any individual, they want to be addressed in the way they're comfortable 
And so you can ask the question. So it's very, it, it, it's very reassuring when they see those pronouns on someone's signature line, because that means that they have an ally. You know, all of us can be allies, parents be allies, listen. Even if you are not comfortable with having a conversation, send your students to see us. We have a graduate assistant, we have uh, Ms. Liddell, you have all of us that have all been safe zone trained. Um, we encourage all faculty and staff to be safe zone trained so that we can help them talk to you, help, help, help them help you to continue to make them be a part of your family because they're going to be a part of the Tiger family. And we want them to be a part of your family as well. And so that is what we do all, all of the time, help the students be comfortable in talking about their pronouns, understanding, even guiding them to classes that will help them understand their journey through this life, no matter how they uh, identify. It, 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 it doesn't matter, it is that we still want to always be respectful of an individual. And that's all we need to see is that that's an individual. And so we wanna be very respectful. So we want, we, want, we want students to come to any program, be a part of it. Uh, last year, uh, I went to a Stonewall ball for the first time in ever in my life. I'd never even heard of one. And so it was just, I mean, it was liberating for me, you know, to see students really express themselves different than what I see them in the university setting. They felt very, very comfortable uh, in, in, in showing up the way they identified. And what was more important to me is to have seen the parents come and take pictures and take pictures with their students. And it made all the good things in the world. I'm glad I had that experience. I wish all my colleagues uh, could have had that experience. And we will continue, of course, this virtual environment does not lend to that, but as soon as we can, we'll have it and we encourage all parents and staff and faculty to come and join that event. Well, that's so wonderful that, that you all do that because I do think that's such an important part of um, the college journey, particularly for those students. Um, all of our students kind of go through this developing their own identity, but those students often struggle a little bit more, but that's such an important role that your office has. Um, in their journey and also helping parents through that as well. So we will we will definitely push out some more information on that too to our parents who may want to be a, a little bit more of an ally for their students as well. Um, so you mentioned training a little bit. Are there any other training that you do for students from within your office? Um, Absolutely. Uh, we start we start the year off with a leadership retreat. And we just don't do it with the uh, 13 organizations that uh, report to us. But again, we do the NPHC, we do SAC, we do SGA. Because all of these organizations, we do uh, NSB over engineering, we do journalism students. Because all of these students need to learn to work together, learn how to collaborate and coordinate. So we won't have so many duplicities in, in, in programming. How come you can't do it together? Uh, and so if, when you go into workplace, you're going to be working on teams most of the time. And so you got to learn to work well together. So that's our first major thing that we do as, as a leadership type thing, leadership development. You're about to go into a new year. How are you going to be a good leader? What, what areas do you need help in so we can guide you as the year goes on? So you can, at the end of the year, you can say, hey, I have the best organization there is. We also... We also do a president's council uh, roundtable where we meet a couple of times a semester with our student leaders to see where they're struggling. Uh, a lot of times it is very difficult for our students to lead their friends. You know, I always tell them that if their student uh, people that they have appointed to positions are not doing a good job, then you should have a conversation with them and then remove them and move on to the next person. And then be more inclusive as to the people on the perimeter, inviting them into the inner circle, that kind of thing. We also take about 40 students. We did not do this this past January. Uh, we, uh, we send about 40 students or we take 
40 students to uh, Texas A&M in College Station, Texas for a leadership conference. It is the largest student-led conference in the country. And so we try to take uh, students that are interested in going there to see how other college campuses lead programs that they do. Uh, they get a chance, of course, they have fantastic speakers. They do workshops. So, of course, two of our organizations, PAWS and EMOC, they do conferences as well. And some of that was born out of going to the leadership conference in Texas. They, if they can do it, we can do it, right? So that's a great example of how, how we do that. We also have uh, probably one of our premier programs is our diversity ambassadors program. And it's a self-selected program. You don't have to be connected to our office in any kind of way. You can self-select to go to that organization. We are the second uh, component is uh, tomorrow, I believe. Uh, it's six sessions. Uh, they, they, they are dedicated to diversity and inclusion, microaggression, social injustice, LGBTQ issues, um, uh, uh, prejudice stuff. We, we, we do, and we are not the presenters. <laughs> we are not the presenters. We present on the first night just to introduce the program, talk about our office and diversity and inclusion. And then we invite uh, people from across the campus to come in and talk about areas that they are familiar with. One of the other areas that I have not touched on is ableism, mm -hmm. is that if you have a student that is receiving services through our uh, Office of Disability Services, or you know that they may have a disability, that is a good program to come to because then you learn what people don't know. It's amazing of what we don't know. And so <clears throat> the ableism uh, uh, series talks about how we relate to people with disabilities. The disability is not the person. The person just has a disability, right? But the disability, the person is not disabled in that way. They have a disability. And so one of the things I learned is that, you know, getting on eye level with someone that uses a wheelchair, not wheelchair bound, but uses a wheelchair, you know, to stand over somebody talking to them, if you can get on eye level with that person. I learned that I never thought about it. Just never thought about having a full blown conversation with somebody is having to look up at you the whole time, you know? So I'm more conscious. So we want your students to, when we talk about inclusivity, that's one of them. We want these people to feel included. So those are one of the things that we do. So that's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite programs that, that, that we have in our office. And we think that everybody should at least go through that session. And at the end, we give you a nice little t-shirt, a nice formal dinner. Uh, we do, and a certificate if you, if you go to four of the six um, sessions. And so it's self-selected, it's not too late because you can get in now and still be able to go to four of them successfully. So tell your students to go on Tiger Zone uh, and submit the application or they can contact me directly and I will send them over to Chelsea and Chelsea will send them an email and give them the schedule. So they don't have to listen to me or Chelsea or anybody else in my office for six sessions. We bring people in to talk about that are experts in those particular fields. And so those are some of the things that we do. We also appoint students to committees to serve on university standing committee. Um, we have an opportunity as we get to know your students to do as Kennedy is doing today is uh, participating in events like this, but we have to know your students to be able to know that we can do these things because this is the kind of exposure we want them to have. So we try to, again, develop uh, top tiger talent. That's great. I always love the amazing work that you all do out of your office. So I, I think that's great. And we will make sure and push out um, about all of those programming so that that our students, our parents can push their students to do to do those as well, because those are open to everybody. It's um, all of our students are, are welcome to be part of that as well. Um, so as we kind of wrap up, um, Kennedy, do you is there any last piece of advice that you have for students, um, particularly right now in this virtual virtual space, but also just getting involved and getting connected and um, either at the university in general or, or, or with the Multicultural Affairs Office? 
the first piece of advice I'll say is time is on your side. Do not let um, a pandemic or a virtual experience limit you and make sure that you're not capable of anything. You can do anything that you want. It's up to you. Uh, multicultural affairs, they are amazing. Without them, I wouldn't even be where I am. And it takes a village. It, it does not happen overnight. You're not gonna wake up one day like, yes, I can be a president today. No, it's gonna take time. And they're here to develop you and they're going to take their time with you as well. Just like you have to take things at your pace, they're gonna take things at their pace with you to develop you and to make sure that you are providing excellence every single day and striving for yourself, even when no one is rooting for you. And Linda, do you have any kind of last piece of advice or, or anything we missed that, that you're, you all are doing in your office? I know it's so much. <laughs> uh, I also want to tell uh, parents, please, please ask your students to get involved in something, even if it's not with my office. It's over 250 registered student organizations on our campus. Uh, even if it's programs through an office that's not an RSO. Because we believe strongly, strongly, the evidence is there. The students that are involved and engaged, they do better. They become better employees. They become be better students. They become better children. Uh, as they get engaged and involved, they will do better. Uh, that it's not all about uh, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Mm -hmm. Because this is a very global society. And they will have to know how to get along well with others. And in order to do that, they have to be involved and engaged to do that with something. I tell you, don't let them get over involved. That is another thing we monitor yeah. to make sure that our students are not over involved. My students will tell you when they get good, good grades, I knock parents. If you're not looking at your students' academic records, I do. <laughs> and I will call them in and ask them what the heck is going on, you know, and make sure that they are using the resources available to them to do better in their classes. Uh, they cannot have a 1.5 and leave any organization that I'm involved with. Uh, so they have to be good students. And so that's very important. So you don't want them just to have a BA, BS or whatever and not know how to get along. And so we want them to go through the door being a great person. You're sending them to school so they can have a good career, good life. So that life is inclusive of a lot of different things. So we wanna make sure that they have that experience. We want them to have the full Tiger experience. And that means going to class and getting involved. So we encourage you to encourage them. And we encourage you to always come on campus if you can and support your students when they are leaving. And so therefore, if I know you, I promise you, I'll send you an email and tell you, hey, your students are going to do this or that, come and, and meet them on. And so we love to see the parents out there uh, cheering their students on. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you, Linda, for that. Um, we always, try to encourage our, our parents to understand the importance of getting involved as well. And, and I think hearing it from, from everybody on our campus really helps with that as well. Cause it is so much more than just the classroom learning. You learn so much as Kennedy said, um, so many of those leadership skills and just working with other people um, from being part of, of campus organizations in, in any form or just being involved on campus. Um, so thank you both so much for being for joining us today and, and talking with us about all of the opportunities. And we look forward to, to Black, the rest of Black History Month this month, but um, all of the, the programming that you all have to offer and um, hope that our, our parents will encourage their students to take advantage of that and, and get involved in some sort of way. So thank you both so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having us.